This would be, coined by John Finkel, the losing slouch. <laughs> <laughs> the Bueller slash Finkel always said he could tell from across the room whether I was whether I had won my match or not. God, how could you have one of mine trap mind break trap in the second game? Which okay, fine. I mean, you'd seen about a third of your deck. It happens. But then in the last game, I can play turn one oath and then still play turn two bargain, and then still at the end I can duress through either a spell snare or a force will. I had oath in my hand at the end, so. You had to have both the spell snare and the force of will on that the third force of will at the I mean, end. The deck's, decks kind of all counter spells, but yeah, I mean, no, game it, two, it's not all free counter spells. You cast so, four free counter spells and had a spell snare, and you never had access to more than one blue mana. No, yeah, I never played a land. <laughs> um, game game two, though. I mean, obviously, if I don't have mind break trap, I counter the the mana so that you can't, you know, tendrils me out. Yeah, but I mean, you don't have that many cards. I actually had a Dark Ritual left that I wasn't casting because I didn't want to let you, like, cast the kind of the last Dark Ritual. Man, I thought those draws... I mean, the the draws didn't work out great. The game two draw, I kept I kept what I hoped was a turn two Necro, but I needed any artifact to turn on the Opal. Turn three Necro, okay, fine, fair enough. <sighs> that last game, though. I mean, that's one Force of Will, sure. Second force of will was uh, my reaction was loud enough that my wife came downstairs to check on me. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty pretty salty after first game because I'm mulligan into the worst hand ever, and obviously based on the turn two orchard, I'm like, really? He draws orchard? Well, I had a tutor to go get it, but yeah, yep, yep. It was a good match. No, I'm definitely a dog in that matchup. Like, your deck is well set up against mine. I just thought the way those particular games played out, you had to draw pretty well in, two, in both game two and game three. Yeah. Um, but now we get the main event. I don't know if you have more to chat. talk about from our match, but we definitely have a, a nice one lined up. Yeah, I forgot. I just want to point out real quick. I just noticed the boxes behind me. Someone's like, is he moving? That's actually just magic cards. I was just organizing, <laughs> I was organizing magic cards yesterday and boxing stuff up to just make room. So... All right, let's uh, let's get to this this next one. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Menendi and LSV. This should be fun. I know a lot of people interested in this matchup. Steve Menendi is 5-0. He's the only undefeated player in the league. Luis Scott Vargas is one of two four-one players in the league. So pretty much a match for first place. Eric Froelich is the other four-one. He'll be playing later tonight. Yeah, I mean, if, if uh, Luis were to win and then Eric were to win, it would be a three-way tie. But they're still all in first place. Right. Right. I needed a. If Chris were to lose, uh, I, one, the winner of us could have got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three and three, <laughs> we would have been tied for fourth. Tied for fourth. Unbelievable. What? Three and three. Well, I mean, 40% of the league makes the playoffs, right? And all you got to do is tie for fourth to get there. Yeah, yeah. Or at least get a playoff game. The playoffs t start getting bigger at that point. It's a uh, King of the Hill format, by the way, for those of you who don't know. So it's a cut to the top four, and then fourth place third. The winner of that plays second. The winner of that plays first. So you win the regular season, and you basically get a buy into the finals. Second what if, of the regular season, you get a buy into effectively the semis. And if we if have you, more people tied for fourth, well, we just keep adding rounds. Okay, five and four will play. Then, you know, et cetera. What determines like fifth and sixth if they have the same record? Uh, well, I mean, we'll do playoff games if we need it. If if we have like a massive tie for fourth, then I think that we have to do single game playoffs for seeding because the playoff <laughs> games are two out of three matches. Yeah, that's what I was, how the hell do we figure that out? Eh, you just play for it. Like if we, the guiding philosophy is just play for every relevant tie, play, play to break every relevant tie. Yeah, I just like a, like a three way tie. Are you just like a three way match, or I have no idea. Yeah, no, you have to do round robin. Three way ties are awkward, but but we'll see. Maybe it'll just end up being a clean break. Yeah, it's lo looking clean right now. Chris is trying to stay above the fray. It's four two. We'll have him alone. He he'll be alone in fourth, no matter what happens. Right? Well, I guess somebody could tie him. He could be tied for third with either Efro or LSC. Yeah. I saw somebody asking in chat why I can't play sanctioned magic. It is the the wife that came down to check on me when I was screaming about Dave's second force of will. Uh, does work for Wizards. I, I worked for Wizards for a bunch of years. She still works there. Means I can't play Sanctioned Magic, but I can still play Magic Online. I can still play Vintage Super League. Wow, what is Luis got in his hand? Is that just every good card in the format? So maybe He's I'm... got a library on the draw, which is awesome. He's also got a ton of acceleration. 
Oh, but okay. Steve has the turn one Delver draw. So Menendian's Delver deck is... Uh, he he actually thinks he can play a long game against control the way he's got his deck configured, but he's also got the legacy draw, right? Where you just like turn one Delver, sure, let's fight. I'm just gonna keep attacking you with a three power guy in the air. Yeah, I mean I, I, I like the turn one Delver draw, but again, like you said, it's a legacy draw. And if you look at these hands, Steve's doing a lot is, against uh time vault voltaic key if Luis can find a key. Right. Basically Steve has a legacy hand and Luis has a vintage hand. I mean, that's, that's what we're looking yeah. at. No, you're right. Every card that Steve has is legal and legacy. And it's like, it's a good, powerful start, but it does, it's not broken. And that's what, you know, at the, ultimately, that's what you want to be doing is broken things. And he's not doing anything broken right now, whereas Luis is set up to win very quickly and take control. I mean, he's got Force of Will and Mana Drain with the um, Teleri Academy. So he can actually play Academy and Mox and have mana for both. And he can play Mana Volt and Time Volt. Steve's hand is just unbelievable right now. I mean, excuse me, Luis's hand is unbelievable right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll milk this library as long as he can. Oh, for sure. Luis is very cautious. Like go and one turn without mana drain up in order to stay in the library? Is I think how this plays out? Luis loves value. That's his thing. <laughs> and, you know, he's not going to want to give up value on that library to try to win faster. All right, Steve plays a pyro. Now, Luis could force a will this, right? He libraries his way up to eight cards. He can afford to pitch a blue card and then go down to six. Draw face puts him at seven. He's still on the library plan. Although the fact that he libraried for lightning bolt means he's got a better way of dealing with young pyromancer. Well, he doesn't have red mana yet, but I still don't think you would force a will that yet because his hand is faster than this clock looks to be right now. Like assuming he can find some kind of library manipulation. Yeah, he so, has to find the key, and then his hand beats. You're right. So I don't think you would force a will. You'd rather use force a will to protect <laughs> to protect what you're trying to do. But yeah, I mean, this is just absurd. <laughs> Ancestral Recall, now we can play a bunch of artifacts, play the Academy, and then still stay on the library plan. Yeah, this is just disgusting. And he doesn't, I don't know if, yeah, this, I mean, right now he can, let's see, that makes two, he can just pass. Yeah, he's got up Mana Drain with seven cards in his hand. Right, there's no reason to Ancestral right now. He's got plenty of cards. And meanwhile, Steve is just uh, Ancient Grudge. That's a good draw, actually, right now. Shuts down you know, his fast mana production, or he can get in there and stop a Time Bolt Key. I mean, Luis has counter, so it's not like it's going to do anything. Right. But it is a good draw. Do you think he'd go ahead and just whack the Mana Vault right here? I don't think he would. I mean... Still have the flashback half of it. If you could Back see his hand, you might think about it just because you can constrain his mana and keep him from his academy off and his time bolt from coming out next turn. But, like, there's no reason right now looking at, from Steve's point of view, looking at that board where you're like, okay, I'm going to Ancient Grudge this mana bolt. Like, well, if he wants to resolve another spell, he does take mana drain out of play. Like, right now, Luis has blue, blue up. If you kill the mana vault, he's down to a single blue off the academy. Right, but I don't think you're worried. Like, he's not going to, if you manage, he's not going to mana drain your preordain and he's not going to mana drain your Delver. So I don't think you're really he trying to drain a Delver. Yeah, I mean, it just seems... If I'm Luis, I'm not managing a Delver. I'd rather Ancestral and then maybe even uh, Thirst for Knowledge. It's almost like they're playing their own game, not worried about each other. He's just trying to attack <laughs> him to zero, and Luis is just trying to find a key. And they're not really interacting. It's just whoever does it fastest is the winner. But neither player knows that, because, I mean, they're both imagining what the other guy's hand could be. Right, they're, like, well... Luis is a little more secure, but, you know, Steve has no idea what's in store for him. I mean, if he could see that hand, he might just concede. Steve doesn't concede, but that's going to hammer him. He might just like, oh, <laughs> enough. No, nah, I mean, Steve's going to make his clock as fast as he possibly can. Luis has what? He has one main deck Toxic Deluge. Is that right? Or is it, there's this Deluge in the sideboard? Um, I have the deck list open here on my machine. I don't think it's in the main. Let's see. Uh, it might be. It's a one-off. It is. Yeah. It is in the main. So that's about the only thing they can punish Steve for extending. But I mean, I think he's right. Like, versus a library, he knows the long game favors Luis. I mean, he may think that the matchup, he can play the long game, but not versus an active library. So he just wants to win as fast as he possibly can. Right now, yeah. the clock is basically a two-turn clock. And I'm not even sure I agree that even without a library, the long game, he can play. I think the long game just ultimately plays into what Steve wants to do. I mean, when you're a, a small weenie creature deck, that's you're trying to win fast. That's why you're well, playing. Well, so that's what I said last week on camera, and 
Steve was letting me know in, in a Facebook chat how wrong I was about this matchup. It's actually not, interesting. That's... I've got him scheduled to comment on the next match, so I'll definitely uh, let him tell everyone his take on this matchup. But he thinks he's a lot better in the late game than, than I did, or, or in your intuition match, seems to match mine. Well, I, I believe he believes that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it true, just, though, right? You know, <laughs> making things up. I think he truly believes that. I'm just saying I don't necessarily agree. He certainly has an interesting take on the matchup, so we'll, we'll certainly hear that from him. One way or the other. So Luis here, he didn't ancestral into turn. He didn't do anything. Actually, I think he wanted to leave up uh, manager in just in case and because he can always library and do it on his turn. You know, if he plays another artifact, he gets that mana back on his academy. Oh, off the mana vault. Steve is going to use his, his uh, ancient grudge as a response to the library activation. So this will fizzle the library if Luis fights it, right? Yeah, that's how this works. I mean... I guess Luis can do no, it it and library. Ancestral it somehow? It, it does not fizzle library. It doesn't fizzle. It activate if you have exactly seven, so it, it'll work anyway? No, yeah, you can, resolution. you can activate library and then response with a vamp tutor and get the card. You can only activate okay. it. You're right. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore, so I don't know if... Uh, so he's, he's just doing just, this before Luis gets another, draw, another card into his hand. Right, That's he just doesn't want him to draw another counterspell. Wow, Luis decides not to fight. He just taps his academy for mana as a response. Yeah, so, so now he's going to recall and thirst for knowledge? Yeah, he tapped the mana vault for mana, he tapped the academy for mana, and then let the ancient grudge resolve. So yeah, now let's see how far he gets. And so and he, well, How about we just ancestral into vault 8 key? Does that sound Are, good? Well, unfortunately, we're in the upkeep, so all that mana is going to go away. So he's going to have to do it next turn. Unless he finds like a black lotus here or some fast mana. Oh, yeah, let's see. No, you need four mana to do it so he can play land, mox. One short. Yeah, he's one short. So he's going to have to do it on his next turn. But he's got, you know, triple force of will. He's got <laughs> misstep if he needs be. Yeah, he probably uh, just runs out the key. He runs out either the key or the vault this turn. And, and well, he's got Ancient Grudge in the yard, but yeah, he can run out one of them and he can bolt a thread if he needs to, but he's at 14 and he's only facing down at most 6, 7, 8, 9. If he were to gush, he could only folks facing down 10, so it's not like he even needs to bolt anything. He can just play, like, Landmox key if he wants. With two Forcibles, he could actually just play his whole combo, but there's no reason to play, you know, with all that mana to play the whole combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm just worried about discarding. I mean, I think the main reason to start playing stuff is he doesn't want to discard. He's right. still got eight cards in his hand even after the lightning bolt. So, And he's actually got enough mana set up and with the library. He can just not play either piece and just drop it all at once and have Academy with, you know, Mana Drain, Misstep, two Force of Wills. Yep. Yeah, got down to seven cards with the lightning bolt. Don't know how Steve can deal with this hand. Louise had the library, had the Ancestral. Ooh, strip just, mine's a start. It is going to constrain his mana a little bit, his blue mana. Uh, he's, sure. he's still going to just lose unless... I mean, well, he takes four to set up Vault Key. Vault Key with double Force of Will back up, and Steve's only got two cards left in his entire hand. Yeah, so, I mean, in theory, the Strip Mine helps, but it, he's still just dead with two Force of Wills and four mana left over and a land drop. Mm-hmm. So this yeah, is... This was, we, I like your initial analysis. This was a legacy hand against a vintage draw. I mean, against, like, yeah, Steve's hand against a legacy deck would have been great. I mean, he had some, you know, he's got qu a qu quick clock, but it's not really quick enough against a hand like this. Now, if, if you know, Luis's hand wasn't this busted <laughs> and he had to, like, fumble around and find things, and yeah, his hand would have been great. So I'm going to start looking at Steve's sideboard just because I'm curious <laughs> since we know the writing's on the wall. He's got uh, Nature's Claim and Ingature. He's got Mount Artifact Removal, which is not really what you want to be doing against this kind of deck. I mean, it's that's more against dedicated um, artifact decks. He's got two Wastelands, which are actually pretty decent against Luis. But as you yeah. saw, he has basic lands, how he destroyed me. Yeah, they are. Uh, the Pyroblast is probably where he's at, and the Null Rod in his sideboard and the Fluster Storm. Those are his key components. Yeah, I believe that Steve is going to try to... thinks he can win a control fight after sideboarding. So you want to know the crazy thing that he did last week? What's that? He was preordaining all of his Delvers to the bottom of his deck. He did not want Delver of Secrets against what was a relatively similar deck. He was like, we're going to control and control fight. 
I have more density of control cards in my deck because he's got so few land that he felt like don't want creatures he just drew infinite counter spells and he could just like take such control of the game with a grip full of five counters that eventually he won with like one random snapcaster mage he played against um rich last week yeah which is a somewhat i mean superficially similar matchup right control slaver instead of grit you know sort of control slaver control versus grixis control yeah, but I almost feel like there's less you have to counter in against the richest deck. Maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. It just like, is a little more robust. Uh, to, like, I mean, Luis's deck is more utility cards, whereas Rich has a little more focused, like Goblin Welder shenanigans. Right, but just having bulky, you can just burst, sort of win out of nowhere. Whereas Rich's deck can't just win out of nowhere. It has to grind you out, you know, get the deck fading combo. and, and Yeah, isn't that all the more reason to want to play the control role if you're Menendian and believe you can win that way? Well, yeah, I mean, I feel that that's more that would be better against in this matchup than the other ah, one. sure sure yeah no i'm basically saying i think menendian is believes he can out control luis in this matchup which was really surprising to me when i first heard him explaining it but i mean his logic kind of hangs together i mean it's all incremental edge incremental edge incremental edge like he has to make sure no haymakers ever get landed right the thing is you know if you look at gush is into we, this nothing a gush in a land that is not going to get it done Luis is very lucky, and you know that's just, it's really hard to defeat that. I mean, you're going to have to really draw well to defeat the the luck that Luis has. <laughs> I smashed him. No, but he is just a known very lucky player. <laughs> he, he he'll admit it himself. I mean, this draw here just shows it, and 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 against and I'll be a little salty in my match against me. Just you know, you've already played Luis. Yeah, no, his draws against me were terrible. He just like he drew absolutely nothing, stone nothing, and I killed him with the little, with the fish. Oh yeah, you were on fish, and he was on his uh, which deck his did pyromancer he? list. His pyromancer list. Sort of gush bond, couple of pyromancers, right. couple of snapcasters. Which proves my point for him to go two one with that list. He had to be <laughs> very lucky because I thought that list was terrible, but you know. Um, I kind of liked it. I mean, as gush bond lists go, I don't like the the most aggressive list with delvers, and I don't like the like. I can only win with a with a like Yog Muscle combo finish the way Martel ran it. I think you kind of want to be in between that spectrum. I don't know. It certainly gets draws that don't do anything. But. Yeah. So here we All go. Right. What do you uh, let's see? Luis's sideboard. He's got a uh, Red Elemental Blast, which is probably pretty decent. Notion Thief is great against Gush. Yes. Um, Pyroblast, just another Red Elemental Blast. Don't need Chewers. Don't need Heretic or Mountain or Graph Digger's Cage or Nihil Spellbomb. Probably brings in that last lightning bolt. I mean, that's what it's for. And then uh, Thought Seize is not really that great. I mean, he, he might want it, but I don't see it. All right. Well, Luis has a couple of mana drains, but only one blue mana. Yeah, Indian he does have has a bunch ice. of cantrips in one land. He might actually be all right with that one land draw. I mean, Fire Ice is pretty good, especially against, you know, Delvers and uh, Pyromancers. And he does have a Mox Jet, so he can cast it. Yeah, I'll buy that. I don't think the hand is great, but it's one of those hands where you probably yeah, you keep it, especially on the draw. Yeah. He's probably going to have turn two mana drain. Not definitely, but decent shot at it. Mulliganing hands like that on the draw are really risky because then if you get, you know, your next few hands could just easily be worse. And then you're kind of, you fall in that snowball where then you have to go to five. And it's like the greedy mulligan. Although Luis is known to be greedy, I don't think he's going to mulligan that one, which he didn't. All right, well, Steve's on the play, also kept his hand. It's a one-land hand, so Preordain kind of needs to hit a land here to really turn things on. Right, I mean, if his Preordain doesn't hit a land, his hand really doesn't do much. True. I mean, it can force a will to stop anything ridiculous from happening. And then after, I'm sure he'll get a Volcanic here so that he'll have Pyroblast. Next turn. So, I mean, this hand doesn't, it's hard to roll over, but yeah, Preordain needs to hit a land. Let's see here. I wish we could see the preordains and the ponders. Yeah. Like uh, I was our tech guy can see them on his on his screen and can whisper them into our ear. I don't know if that's when, when I was topping in our third game, I mean, just never seeing a land. I was like, dear God, is this? Am I just going <laughs> to lose this game somehow? When I had a grip full of counters. Yeah, it's really hard for me to put the third threat together. <laughs> like I'm tapping mana vault, sacking lotus, spending a tutor, like all gets invested in that Yawgmoth bargain. So. Yeah, I was pausing because I thought the chances. I thought about countering the mana because if you had the um, 
the uh, Mind's Desire. Mind's Desire, yep. But then I realized Mind's Desire would be for four, and I have two counters anyway. So as long <laughs> as it's you know just two threats, if you hit like some land or mana in there, I could be all right. And then I was like, you know, if it's just bargain, I just can win. So I figured I'd let it resolve the, the mana vault. But let's yep. see. Yeah, Mind's Desire is definitely the, the, the plan you want to set up against a control deck so that you don't get beat by Force of Will. But I mean, with that deck, the hands often play themselves. Right. So he plays out his Time Vault because he had no other play. He couldn't keep up Mana Vault, Mana, no reason to leave Fire Ice up. And this way, it puts Luis, I mean, it puts Steve in a spot where he has to just always be cautious of... Yep. Just a top deck key for the game, so now he has Voltaic to kind of key is man now lethal. Right, you can't so, pyroblast a Voltaic key. You can't flusterstorm a Voltaic key. So it really makes you can't a, misdirect a Voltaic key. He's down to like just the force of will to defend against it. So it's definitely a precarious position for Steve. Right, and it also makes it in a spot where, like, say Steve, he doesn't know Steve's bottleneck on mana and doesn't have creatures, but if Steve had, like, a turn two creature, it keeps him from wanting to just slam it down because then he can't really keep up counter mana or ancient grudge mana, so... Playing that time bolt out there, it kind of really puts Steve in a bad spot. It combined with Steve not wow. having land. It's yeah, we talked about it. If that preordain doesn't find a land, Steve, uh, Steve could be in trouble. And now he has to discard here, right? Right. And, and those cards do anything. Check this out. Luis skipped his turn to because there's no reason not to. <laughs> time waiting when your opponent is mana screwed and discarding because they're not hitting man land drops. Wow. Then you can easily just give them another turn. Like, hey, buddy, try it again. Because <laughs> they're basically not taking that free turn because their turn was just draw discard. Yeah, and this way Luis can be can is set himself up later on to do something threatening, then take his time walk turn, do some more stuff threatening. Yeah, wow. no, that play was really sweet by Luis. Yeah. I mean the null rod can shut down the whole vault key combo if Menendian can get it into play. Well, here's another Which if he were to draw a land, he could just cast it and Luis has no way to stop it, but it's funny. One of the reasons Steve likes his deck in this matchup is that he has so few lands. Kind of ironic. Really, he needs two. Can't operate without two of them. Hmm. And still no land. Mm -mm. I don't know, man. I just showed you don't even need lands to win. I mean, <laughs> I guess not. You need your opponent to give you spirit tokens, though. Yes. So Luis has. Two dead mana drains and a toxic deluge, which does nothing right now. Snapcaster is nothing to Snapcaster. I could see him next turn in his upkeep um, icing Steve's <laughs> Volcanic Island. I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't. Yeah, no, that's a good line. I think that's exactly what he should do. No, it's not going to. I mean, it does just get Pyroblast. Oh, that was Tropical. Was that Tropical or Volcanic? Whichever one was. If it was Volcanic in play, it just gets Pyroblast probably, but... Pretty sure he had the he had the volcanic. He just drew the tropical. All right, here's Null Rod. And you know what? Luis never did find that second blue mana. So Luis should take an extra turn here, most likely. Oh, definitely should take an extra turn. Also, he's gonna cycle ice, which yeah, this would have worked out way better if he'd done it in his upkeep. To tap the land so the null rod couldn't come on. But I mean, it's hard for him to know that Steve's gonna just draw the land that particular turn. And have a, a two mana threat that you really want to deal with. Like usually it's a creature. Exactly. That Pyro, a pyromancer, and you can just fire it. All right, well, Luis will get two turns. But there's a null rod in place, so he's down to... Oh, now there's the blue mana. Wow. Yeah, so it's good, because with this turn, he can ponder, and then he'll play a land and be able to untap and start the Steve's turn with two blue oak, so he'll be able to manage rain any threats. But as you were talking about, Steve looks like he doesn't want creatures. His hand is just counter spells. Right. He's got six of them. So he shuffled on Ponder and then drew a Lightning Bolt. And, and you know, maybe Steve's strategy is great because right now Luis has got Deluge, Bolt, Bolt, but Steve just doesn't have <laughs> creatures. He's got six counter spells and now a Gush. Yep. But I think if he's not applying pressure, I mean, Luis is also going to be able to use those Snapcasters as threats if he wants. And if, if you look at this board right now, if you were to play a Snapcaster and cast Ponder or, or Fire Ice, Steve doesn't have any answer to a Snapcaster. It's true. Steve, Steve's hand, you know, he takes probably, you know, 10 damage from a Snapcaster right now. I mean, he can power blast it is what he can do. He probably power blast it before yeah. it resolves. Yeah, he probably, uh, he, he might eventually. Well, actually, yeah, before it resolves because he don't want him to get the value from the spell. Right. But I mean, if Luis runs out of stuff to do, then, so yeah, Snapcaster just targeting Fire Ice, I would think. It all, yeah, it almost it's has to. step, right? 
Yeah, it has to get pyroblasted. Yeah, this is uh, the end step. Demonic tutor. What so he can't go way back before that null rod. He cast it anyway. He's got mana drain mana. Is this first main phase, right? Yeah, this is his first main phase. So he'll See that sometimes with a mana drain deck, they'll go to their second main phase to cast spells if they want to defend them with mana drain but don't have anything to do with the mana this turn. It's so weird because I've been playing Vintage Live for years and I'm so used to that. But then on Magic Online, I always forget to do that because <laughs> you can't just say it. You have to like click to it. Right, and it's right. also kind of weird when you click to it, it, like your opponent kind of, oh, okay, you have the mana drain. So you have to kind of start clicking to your second main even when you don't have the mana drain. Yep. It's just such a pain in that, but it's just like, all right, whatever. All right, well, Steve is going to get off a gush in response to this Demonic Tutor. Luis lets that happen. Gushes into land, it looks like. And now Menendian has built up the storm count with his gush. So Fluster Storm does stop this Demonic Tutor. Huh. Luis leaves up Mana Dream and says go. I'm wondering, I mean, I wonder, I want to know, I wish we could talk to Luis or, and figure, I wonder what he was going to get, you know, and I wonder if, yeah, it's, yeah. if he would have been able to just fluster storm at this turn. I mean, obviously you get it now because if he were to get something that's not a, sp a spell that you could fluster storm, you kind of end up having to use a force of will. Or if he were going to get something like Academy, which makes mana, you know, you wouldn't be able to counter it at all. Does Luis, I wonder if Luis has ways to blow up Nullrod in his deck. Probably, well, right? He probably you know? sideboarded in something. Right. Because in his main deck, I'm looking at his main deck here. He, maybe he just tinker for Blightsteel, because in his main deck he doesn't really have anything, but it looks like after sideboard he's got, obviously, if he brought him in, the Heretic or the Chewer are it. Yeah, I mean, I think he knows that Menendian can fight a mana tonight, can hurt his mana. I would guess that he's got an answer to Null Rod sideboarded in. Luis draws Ancestral, which sets us up for a potentially interesting fight, given that Menendian has Misdirection in his hand. He, he's the, yeah, he loves a Misdirection. Yes, sir, he does. Mr. Misdirection. All right, more end step? Yeah, Menendian's end step. Luis goes for Snapcaster. There's nothing super sexy in there, right? He's still just cycling. Um, we'll see. We're in the end step, so yeah, you can't. Yeah, this is like four mana cantrip Snapcaster. Monitor. Yeah, it's literally just tap your land. But like, like we said, Menendian. I mean, that the the two one attacker is pretty relevant, and yes, right. he's going to have to pyroblast it. It's forcing him to pyroblast. Yeah, for sure. Right, which is also, I mean, I think Luis is doing his best to sort of bleed through all the counter magic he can so that eventually his his finish is the Ancestral Recall. I think, I don't know that he wants to go for it against, what's been ending? he got seven cards in his hand, though? Right, he's got seven, hand, seven cards. He can cast two of his counter spells right now. He has two misdirections in this list, right? Is it, uh, is it just on the one? I, I, I rarely see two, two misdirections. In the main? Two main deck misdirections. Wow. He's yeah. Mr. Misdirection. It, it, it's a card that Steve loves. Yeah, he, I mean, he's always loved it, but two as, a, as an animal. I mean, you play it. it you yeah, be, I know. Especially when he knew he was playing Chris Pakula in um, <laughs> the first round of his trimester. You know, those are two dead cards. Yeah. So it's pretty rough to start two. Because if any of your other opponents are playing shops, then all of a sudden two out of your three matches, you've got two dead cards. It's a little risky. But speaking wow. of dead cards, Luis's hand. Yeah. Black Lotus, Mox Ruby, although Menendian draws his own Lotus. This is, uh, I mean, we're really putting Steve's take on the matchup to the test here. He discarded twice early, but his theory is he has so few mana cards in his deck that if we're just in top deck mode that he will eventually gain control. The other control deck will draw more blanks than he does. Well, I think the key to this is not only that, it's that 
yeah, well, like you said, draw more blanks. Luis has Bolt, Bolt, Deluge, which are just, it's like three non-existent cards right now. Right. Steve, I mean, he may have sideboarded the Delvers out, for all we know. Yeah, and Ephra has a good point. He says Pakula has four dismembers, so they're not too dead, which is true. <laughs> sure. Still not a card I really like to have in my hand against uh, Stacks deck, Misdirection. Yeah. I don't even really know. I mean, I guess if he's, if he's dismembering your Snapcasters, I mean, what the heck is he really dismembering against Luis? But, well, Menendian finally grew I mean, a I'm all so confused, but yeah. And Menendian's plan for that creature is to just force Luis to put Mana Drain into the graveyard. Now Luis has some Mana Drain mana floating. Does he do anything? He can time walk off of it, which I'm sure he will. Yeah, he's only got one counter. Oh, Pyroblast is nice. Now I'm sure it's gonna it's going to become tempting. Wow, and a tinker. Interesting. So this is how you want this. No, you pick a fight with Ancestral first, right? Yeah, because if you resolve Tinker, you don't even care about the Null Rod anymore. You get your Blightstool and you win the game. Yeah. So I think he's going to pick a fight in Steve's instep with this Ancestral. Right. I agree. Although it's kind of dangerous because if you lose the fight over Ancestral to Misdirection, then your opponent's hand is pumped up again, and he probably has pretty well armed to fight over the Tinker. Well, Luis declined to fight, and now is going to be discarding. Not that those Lightning Bolts are very good. He could also just cast Bolt on his face if he's going to discard. <laughs> sure. Discarding Toxic Deluge is apparently the better line. Yeah, for sure. Wow. See, the longer he waits to pick that fight, the more Steve just fills up with counters, which makes it even worse. Steve's got five mana, so he can actually cast one forced, pitch to one force, and pitch to a misdirection if he wants. That's three. Or he could pitch to two times, pitch twice, cast Fluster, cast Spell Pierce, and Snapcaster, ah. Fluster, or Spell Pierce. So he could have potentially three, five counters. Yeah, well, like there's, the thing is, Luis can just tap out main phase here for this Jace. There's nothing Steve can punish him with by just, he doesn't have the Haymakers to be able to just untap and drop something insane. Um, so Luis, all right, again, he's trying to sort of bait out all the counters. It's like, fine, I'll let you counter this Jace. The issue is it looks like Steve's just going to draw more counters and threats so that if Luis isn't able to play multiple in one turn and, like, kind of out-mana Steve, which he's not able to do right now, it's yeah, the no rod. Not work there. This plan I mean, that one no work. rod is essentially a, what, two for five? It's a pretty yeah. big deal. Someone made a good joke. Luis's plan is to win on time. Yeah. Brainstorm. Main phase brainstorm. For so minute. Steve just drew his third force of will, so he's got four pitch counters. Which is tough to do with only seven cards in here. No, luckily magic is, it's like it's built into not allowing eight card hands or something. Like, that's just kind of funny how that worked out. Wow. Luis is just pyroblasting the brainstorm. Yeah, I mean, he'd, he'd rather fight, start a big fight on Menendian's turn over Menendian's Brainstorm than over Luis's Ancestral. I don't think Steve's going to fight, though. Yeah, yeah no, Steve's there's totally no content to trade Brainstorm for Pyroblast. I think he comes out ahead on that. Yeah, there is no reason. He was going to have to discard if he didn't do something, so Steve's totally fine with that trade. Academy, that makes a lot of mana. Well, Luis has all the mana he needs now. Problem is he's got those two stupid lightning bolts in his hand. It's right. like every card in Steve's hand is awesome, and Luis has a pair of blanks, more or less. Right. So he's only really got four threats, and Steve can cast one, two, three, four, five counter spells. So he's still one threat short. All right. Luis is going to go ahead and go for this Tinker. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just going to keep bombarding him with threats and try to finish when he resolve a Yawgmoth's will. Steve obviously doesn't want Tinker to resolve. It's just a question of how does he counter it. Oh, interesting. By capping that one mana for the Brainstorm, it means he can't hard cast a Force of Will here, which is, I think, what he would like to do. Because Flusterstorm doesn't do it. Yeah, this is pretty clever, actually. Luis picked a good spot. Steve is forced to pitch to his Force of Will well, because he only has the four untapped lands. Now Luis can manage Rain, and what Steve basically has to pitch again. 
Well, yeah. I mean, let's see how much mana does he have open. If he fluster storms, he's I think got, there's like, enough on tap lands under there to pay for fluster storm. So he's got he's got, he's got five. five. So yeah, no, this storm, storm be for four. Well, Louis picking his spots pretty well. Cool match. Yeah, someone made a comment. You wouldn't hard cast force if you could, and I don't think you would either because you get to leave up spell. You get to leave up flusterstorm, snapcast, or flusterstorm if you need it. Like you get to use your mana more efficiently to cast more counters, whereas if you hard cast, then you kind of lock yourself in. Yeah, I'm not in love with pitching two cards though. Maybe that's all true. What's he snapcasting back? Do we so. let it resolve? Right? Is that not what Steve wanted? <laughs> It's like, what does it, what does it get? I think it just. Oh, Pyroblast. It'll get yeah, Pyroblast. Health. Yeah, it'll get Pyroblast, and then Menendian's got a Fluster Storm left afterwards, which will now be uh, able to stop the Tinker. So, yeah, he can Pyroblast. And he'll leave up one more mana, so he still has Flusterstorm mana and one more pitch counter. Wow. So after this Snapcaster counter spell, he'll still have two more he can cast also. Yep. And Luis is out. Oh, we put it on Flusterstorm. Is it enough now? Yeah, but with the Snapcaster itself, it's going to be five. What? Storm count is four. When he casts yeah. it, the Storm count will be five, plus its original copy will be six. Oh, okay. The Storm count will be five. No, isn't it a copy for every previous spell this turn? Right. So we've played Tinker, Forceful, Mana Drain, Snapcaster. So it'll be, oh, yeah, it'll be for five mana. So Luis can actually just tap out and pay for it. That's what I think, too. I wonder why he wouldn't just get Pyroblast. That's what I'm wondering. All right. Yeah, how many copies there? Storm counts four, right? Four spells cast before Fluster Storm. So Luis can pay. I don't know why Fluster Storm over. I mean, I guess Steve wants Luis to tap out, I suppose. Yeah, it might have been a mistake, to be honest. He might have just miscounted. And he's saving the Pyroblast for some future Snapcaster? Maybe he just thought the fluster storm was for enough to stop it and didn't realize that it was one off. Would be a surprising mistake for Steve to make. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I just don't really see a reason. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't see a reason right now for that. Otherwise, I'm trying to see. I mean, it is tap out because even if he taps out, what can Steve doesn't have a threat to play? Right, right. There are no haymakers in Steve's deck. There's and more. Like Hammer spells are denser, but there's no haymakers. Not even a haymaker. He doesn't have anything to play. He has. <laughs> Four reactive spells. So if you were to tap out, Steve has to hold the top of his deck has something. He's just going to untap and attack and say go. I mean, it does turn on uh, Steve's other Fluster Storm, but whatever. I mean, you could have Pyro Blasted and then had the Fluster Storm in your hand for later. It's a blue card to pitch to Force of Will and all. Yeah. And I guess Steve's line lets him cast this Fluster Storm for sort of value, but, but no, it doesn't. The Pyro Blast would just have been better there. You playing around mental misstep? I guess this line is well, whatever. The mental missteps on the pyroblast, then this fluster storm is still. Yeah, then you're still in the same out. spot, and he had to use a card. But Luis is tapped out. I don't know. Steve spent a card getting Luis to tap five mana. That's what happened. People saying this ensures Tinker doesn't resolve. So does Pyroblast and then yeah, respond so with a Fluster Storm. That ensures it does. That's the same spot he's in now, but he gets to keep a card in his hand if Luis doesn't have right. a misstep. Yeah, I mean, it's just a mistake. Like, yeah, Ephro Poker in the chat just said it. I mean, there's no real reason. All right, well, when the dust settles, Steve has the Snapcaster in play, so he's able to start attacking for damage. He also drew a Fluster Storm, so he's still on... Two, maybe three, yeah, two or three counters. Luis is clearly trying to clear a path for Ancestral and or Yawgmoth's will. 
but he is living in fear of misdirection. He knows that Steve Menendian is a man that loves misdirection. And Menendian at this point has seen, what, over half his deck? This guy's at 26 cards left in his library? Where right. you he, he knows he has two. <laughs> Second misdirection. That's insane. All right, well, the Lightning Bolt Dispatch Snapcaster. So Luis can't afford to just sit here and stare for some more. Yeah, I mean, he can... Um, can Luis uh, deck him? I, th I mean, I think before that, he would just be able to attack with this Pyro, man, pyro this uh, Snapcaster, but he can't deck him because Steven has to... I mean, I guess he could just kill his threats, but Steve has <laughs> to have more threats than Bolt's left. You sure? Well, there's Trigon Predator. Right. Okay. That's Yeah, I think Luis wants to try to win this on mana. Like, he can get to the point where if he does nothing, the fact that it's weird, like, the fact that Luis has more lands in his deck, that's often how you win one of these control fights, is that they have to cast something first or they just start discarding. Whoever plays yeah, I mean, with land can often win a fight like this. Yeah, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how much I like not having all the threats and just playing this counterspell game because I feel like, you know, Luis has been baiting out counterspells, but now Luis just drew his own force of will. He's, you know, he's doing very well at getting a lot of value out of every card he has. Right. I think he's going to end up ahead at this rate, specifically because of mana. Like, Steve's going to get bottlenecked unless he draws some land, and Luis is going to be able to play a bunch of spells at once. Gush helps, though, right now. This Gush is really going to help Steve. Doesn't help with the fact that he's got eight cards in his hand. What did he discard? No, Roddy. Yeah, yeah discard no card is useless. It's useless until he destroys the first, but he doesn't have the mana. He can't afford to tap down and cast one right now. Well, he's going for. Is this main face not caster? Why is he main face now? Again, Steve's down below five mana. Well, no, because he idea? probably wants to cast a sorcery, such as Demonic Tutor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This does or let him time walk. This does let him get sorceries. Oh, well, time walk's not bad. And Steve is going to gush as a response. Luis allows that. So we hit a Mystical Tutor and a Mental Misstep. Misstep's not doing much right now, but it's going to be good uh, against the, if the Ancestral ever gets cast, or the Bolt, or the other Misstep Luis has. Mystical Tutor's not a card I really like in these control matchups. I don't really like it much. Anymore. Yeah, I'm surprised that's still in his deck. That seems like something you sideboard out in this matchup. Especially yeah, and he really loves it having the... We've talked extensively, but when you have Gush in your deck, it's really sweet to like set up you know, Gush into Time Walk or things like yes. that. When you have in a, in a control and control fight, though, you're just down a card whenever you can. Listen, I agree. I'm just saying. I see you know, <laughs> the logic in it is to, or to, you know, find a force of will before you gush, which is if you want massive card disadvantage, mystical tutoring for force of will. But I guess you're getting it back, you know, gushing. So it's not really that bad. All right. Well, Snapcaster's still in the stack. Steve has to decide what he wants to do about that, if anything. In order to counter it, he would have to use a force of will. Yeah, you can't fluster storm or you can't misdirect it. So he lets the Snapcaster resolve. Now what does Luis want to get flashback to? I didn't see what it was. Tinker. Tinker. Here's the Tinker again. So he's got a force of will. He can try to jam an ancestral in there and a misstep. Oh, yeah, Luis is doing a from ever giving any misdirection targets. I mean, he's decided to fight the game over this Tinker. Right, he used the Tinker as bait last time, he's using the Tinker as bait again. Misdirection just doesn't help Steve in a Tinker fight. Right, Luis is playing pretty smart against a deck with two misdirections. He's just making sure to not, you know, he's going to make Luis use, I mean, Steve used those misdirections as basically force of wills on counter spells. So right. Ideally, so that he can eventually try and resolve Ancestral Recall. And Steve pitches a Trigon Predator to this force of will. Now what? Luis just, he could... Hard cast Force of Will here. 
it's basically hardcast force of will allow this. I, I'm pretty tempted to hardcast force of will. An Indian has no haymakers. Like you don't have to keep up force of will. And Steve and an Indian believes that he needs to pitch to stop Tinker. I don't know. I might. It's obviously a lot easier when we can see the hands, but hard casting force of will would have been tempting to me there. So now we get to see, you know, Steve's gonna. Steve just has a few turns to draw an answer to this snapcaster. I mean, he's a handful of counters. He can mystical tutor and find one. I wonder if he's getting ancestral of his own. He hasn't played his own, has he? No. Uh, maybe that's the one. That's the reason Luis wants to hold on to Force of Will. Is he going to pitch his ancestral <laughs> to his Force of Will? Oh, let's see. The patience that Luis has shown with this ancestral recall is impressive. Yeah, I mean it's impressive until you realize we have deck list and you're playing against a madman with two misdirections along with all his other counters. I'm still impressed. So yeah, Steve got his own ancestral. And he'll be able to, uh, you know, with this hand, resolve the ancestral and empty Luis out if Luis tries to stop it. He's, he's down to like 18 cards in his deck, though. Like, I actually think there's a chance Luis can deck him. Well, he's going to have to use that bolt on one of Steve's threats. If Steve, I mean, he did pitch a Trigon Predator, so right. how many threats How he many had creatures are in Steve's predator? list? We haven't seen a single Delver go through him. I, th I really think the Delvers might be in the sideboard. He's got to have the Pyromancers in the deck. I mean, they're so good. One of those is dead, and there's no Yawgmoth's Will. <laughs> this is not the way I thought. That, like I said, I'm, I'm as surprised as you are to be suggesting this line. So here we go. Pyroblast at least gives him an answer to this Snapcaster. If he need, if he decide, once he gets low enough and decides it's time. I mean, he's going to have to kill it eventually. Unless he draws a Pyromancer. Right. We haven't had a match go to time yet. If this goes <laughs> to third game, we might get there. No, there's still like 29 minutes on Steve's clock, right? Well, they're actually playing at a pretty decent clip. And we're still in game two. I'm just saying, if we get no, to the third right. game, there's a chance. All right, here comes the Ancestral. An Indian wants to draw three. Luis says no. I have a mental misstep. Unfortunately, I'll say Luis has a second forcible now, but an Indian's hand is still just six counter spells. Right. But, like, what's he drawing? He's drawing more random counter spells. Chrono says they have 100 minutes. I'm not talking about the they. I'm talking about Steve and his 20, <laughs> 28 minutes to finish this game and another. All right, Luis finally goes for that Ancestral. And he's going to get the bad news here. Yeah, he's going to get it misdirected, which he's going to be able to force. I mean, I think that's Luis's line is, I will, I'll use my force of will to defend my Ancestral rather than trying to stop yours. Right, and Luis has actually got enough mana, it looks like, with his... Can he hard cast both Force of Wills? Yes, he has 10 wow. mana. Wow. Hard cast both, which is what, it, what a spot he was getting to before he started that. There's the Pyroblast, which Luis allows. Now Luis is going to play his other Force of Will. Now the sick part of this song... Still not going to work. He's going to play his other Force. He's going to have to use his last two cards... And you would think, okay, great, he can resolve Yawgmoth's will next turn. But he's going to draw six cards. cards. And draw six cards. No, nope, I still got more. I don't okay. even have to use I my last force of will. Not that he could cast it. I mean, Menendian was out. But Menendian has the last counter, and because Luis has a lightning bolt in his hand, where Menendian had a business card. Crazy. So, now we so get the when all the death settles... Steve is going to successfully misdirect Luis's Ancestral to point at himself, and then his own Ancestral is going to resolve. Steve Menendian is going to draw six cards, refill full grip of seven, LSV is down to a Yawgmoth's Will. And look at that. Six cards, obviously a gush, but like... You know, Spell Pierce doesn't do anything right now. The lands don't do anything right now. Strip Mine's actually good against the Academy to sort of stop the, the Yawgmoth's Will Madness. But, um... There's the, the 
He does have a Trigon Predator, which has enough time to kill Luis just barely. There's 10 cards left in an Indian's library. Um, but the young Pyromancer can certainly do a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, he can Pyromancer gush and, and go off. I mean, the writing's on the wall for this one. When you draw six cards and your opponent's down to you, a Yagmatsu on a bolt. Six cards aren't that awesome. Gush is, is going to be great here. Strip Mine's actually really good to constrain Luis's mana. Two threats. A blue card to go with his Force of Will, Spell Pierce. So Luis will be able to um, bolt this Pyromancer. He'll be able to gush and make a token. He's probably not going to Force of Will that bolt to make sure he can keep himself alive. And then the Trigon Predator gets to go the distance and finish him off. Is how this looks like it could play out. So we're on Luis's turn. Yep, draw another dead artifact. Does in fact use the lightning bolt. I assume that's yeah. pointed Pyromancer. He has to do this before combat, obviously, because a gush, you could just make a token and block. <laughs> Steve actually opts to not gush and make a token. Wow. Really? He's worried because he's going to just get the Trigon Predator out, which can block. Yeah, but he has to attack. It's a little greedy. I, I agree. Vintage players love their greed and value, you know. I'm literally looking at his library. He's at nine cards. Listen, I, I, I said I, you can just gush and make a token and block. He opted not to gush, so... Yeah, and here's another lightning bolt. What are you going to do now? So he's going to actually, he's required to force the will this one because I think he might be pretty much out of threats. I agree. That it might be the last creature in his library. This is the craziest game. Yeah, force the will. He's got one counter, one force left. Oh, there's another Pyromancer. Okay. I mean, can he even afford to attack with Trigon? Let's see here. Yeah, he's kind of got to attack with the Trigon because he's got to try to win. Yeah. This assumes that uh, Pyromancer, and yeah, Luis is in fact out of gas, so... so if Luis draws a counter, he can resolve Yagmat's will. And he did. Wow. Luis actually can win this game, I believe. He gets to play his academy. Yeah, I think this is game. Wow. Menendian can force a will, but he has to pitch the spell pierce, which wasn't effective. Luis has the red blast. So that Yagmat's will is going to resolve... And Luis Steve Menendian went through his entire library. He's down to eight cards. Finally got some creatures in play, but good grief, what can LSV do here? I gotta assume it's enough. It's a million lightning bolts, right? Or at least two or three? Okay, he plays the Academy. He's got two red mana left. He can play the Moxon, although they don't do much with that Null Rod in play. Still might as well they, play. They pump, up, they pump up the Academy. Right. His Tinker has been removed from the game, so it's just Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, right? Yeah, this is just Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. Bang! Kill you! <laughs> Louis Scott Vargas defeats was... Steve Menendian, ties him for first place. Menendian now has a loss. It was a really interesting game. I, I mean, I look forward to talking to Steve to get his take on it. He's looking to see what else he had in his library. It was a time walk, period, and it was one more young Pyromancer. So I guess all... All these young Pyromancers were kind of on the bottom of this library, which is like seriously that game. Heavy, but no Delvers. Realize, the Delvers were on the sideboard. You got to realize how incredible that game is. I mean, if you really think about it, how great Luis played. Yeah. Steve had sick more counter spells than Steve had cards in hand often throughout that that <laughs> match. Right. And Luis was able to play sequence of spells, use man. I mean, Luis played. I don't think many people were going to win that game from Luis's side. Yeah, no, it certainly helped Luis that Steve drew six, and then they weren't awesome. It was like a strip mine, a fetch land, a spell pierce, a force of will. But, but in his defense, Steve already had all his good cards early when he didn't have right. land. At this point, he's going to draw land. He, 
I, that's just I'm literally in shock at how amazing Luis played and to, was able to win that game. I mean, it's unbelievable. Although I think Steve and you know in his defense of Luis is great play. Steve also made I think the the uh, fluster storm play was a misplay. I mean, he lost value here and there because he had to use an extra counter that he could have saved for later. Sure. So he got himself in spots to where he ended up running out of counters and he might have could have played a little tighter and had those counters for those that big war later. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that one Fluster Storm play, if, that, if he gets the Pyroblast there, then he's still got the Fluster Storm, and maybe that Yawgmoth's will never gets to resolve at the end, and he just wins with the, with the Pyromancers. Right. Cool match. Wow. But Luis. That was a tough match, and they both, you know, I'm sure they both gave it their all. There's a, a million cards in their hands, Counter Wars. I mean, that's the kind of match that when I'm in the match, it just, I give a headache, and I just want it to stop. I'm like, please make it stop. <laughs> so, um, you know. Yeah, I just saw in the chat. Steve's them. like, all right, give me a second. We have him queued up to do commentary on the next round. Um, but he need he made me need just a second to collect himself. No, yeah, that was that was a draining match to watch and to talk about. So I can only imagine being the players. And you know, even Luis, if you saw in the chat on Twitch, wrote, "Dear God!" As soon as it was over, as it was over <laughs> because even though he won, that was still you know an insane match to be a part of. So yes, it was. Thanks to both of them for giving us such a treat to watch. So have you talked to Efro about his matchup with Martel? That's what we've got coming up next. It's uh, Eric Froelich trying to join these two in the three-way tie for first if he can take out the Dredge Menace. So we were going to play it, and then I went to go build Dredge, and I have pretty much four of everything on Magic Online. I've had okay. it forever. But I don't have Dredge cards. It's like, oh, I'm just missing things like Misdirection and Undiscovered Paradise. Not Misdirection, uh, Unmask and Undiscovered Paradise. Turns <laughs> out I was about 225 tickets short of completing the deck, only needing <laughs> nine cards. And I was yep. like, I'm not really going to put 225 on Magic Online so we can play a few dredge matches. So, <laughs> we, you know, we think it's, uh, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. You know, he's got Cage in the main. You know, he's got Mental Misstep for therapies. Yeah, the Cage in the main is gigantic. It's, it's going to be a, a tough... Poor Trick and Mage just to go get it, of course. A tough matchup, for sure. But, you know, if anybody, if you have faith in anybody can play well... It's both these players are both great players, two of the best on the tour right now. So I think we're going to get a good no, match. Good. You know, we're not going to. Yeah, I was saying our... earlier today, I thought that Eric might be the guy in the league who's been playing the best Magic of late. But if it's not Eric, it's probably Tom. Yeah. So, although based on that last match, now I see why Luis is a Hall of Famer. I mean, that was. <laughs> I'm still in shock, and I'm going to watch that one later and just kind of watch the match because there's a lot to learn in that match about. Oh yeah. Patients. Oh yeah. That was definitely a clinic. Super interesting. The patience was amazing from both players. I mean, they both it was it was amazing. All right, well, I think that we'll let you go. Thanks for hanging out with us again. Cool, man. This was fun. and uh, Good match. Good luck next week. Who do you play next week? Uh, I haven't looked. It's two weeks, right? That's the important thing. It's two weeks. You're going to Hawaii, right? Yes, I will. I'm leaving Hawaii in two days. Me and Eric and Luis, we're all staying together. And we're going to try to stay away from vintage and focus on standard and drafts. But I'm sure there will be some late-night vintage brewing and, and matches <laughs> going on, you know, taking a break. I'll be around if you need anybody else for that. So For sure. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I, uh, I don't fly down till I guess, Wednesday. Yeah, I fly down Wednesday of next week. So doing the commentary, I'll be in the booth all week, all weekend long. That should hopefully, be fun. Hopefully I can get back to uh, my old Pro Tour ways and, and make it make it deep. I haven't made it deep in a while. I, haven't play, I only played Dublin last year. I haven't played one in a while, but it would be nice because I've been playing a lot of Magic lately and hopefully play a lot more going the full eight, nine days early. So maybe I can pay yeah. off with all this practice and, and do something. I wonder if all this vintage play might help Luis, too. I mean, he's that was a hell of a match he just won. Like, he seems like he's on top of his game. And he's, I mean, I think vintage has sort of got him just shuffling up magic decks more than maybe he was six months ago, like 12 months ago. It's got me playing a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we should definitely be fun. It does mean no Vintage Super League next week. So for those of you watching, um, there will not be a show on Tuesday. Uh, take the week off because most of us will be in Hawaii. Um, we'll be back in two weeks, though. New set of decks. We'll see if there's any cons cards to come out. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Dave. Uh, we will be back momentarily with the match between Eric Froelich and Tom Martell.
Welcome back. I have with me, when his webcam finishes loading, a wild Luis Scott Vargas. Hey, everyone. I, that match that was, was intense. Yeah, that game was pretty insane. Game one was actually pretty interesting, too, though. Uh, obviously, we can't quite, uh, you know, compete with uh, game two in terms, in terms <laughs> of, like, insanity. So, like, yeah. So, ga game two, the, the main, like, thread of the game was that I needed to resolve this Yogwell, and I needed to not get my ancestral misdirected. Yep. One of one of those two things happened, but luckily it was the the, the more important one. Sure. So, yeah, no, the turn where he got, he drew six cards, he resolved his ancestral yeah. and her ancestral. It was actually really impressive patience. We were talking about it. You're sitting on the end on the ancestral, knowing that that's a man who loves his misdirections well, and, and yeah. just waiting. Well, I know he has two misdirections, so I certainly can't fire it off like very you know very quickly, but. Uh, I did go for it there because I wanted to be able to cast Ancestral and then hard cast both Force of Wills that turn. First of all, I still had Academy because at some point he's going to draw a Wasteland or Strip Mine. Second of, second of all, uh, on his turn or, or uh, before my turn, so then I can untap, hopefully draw one of my two Forces or two Red Blasts or Jaces to try to push through the Yogwell. Yep. So Yeah, no, I, Dave and I were just watching you extract maximum value from every single card. And Steve had a really interesting take on that matchup, too. He definitely uh, sideboarded out his Delvers. Because yeah. he felt like he wins the control versus control fight because he just felt like his control cards were denser because he has so little land in his deck. He felt like if you guys are just in top deck mode for 10, 20 turns, he'll come out ahead. And he kind of did. Like, he managed to misdirect your Ancestral and get his and resolve his own ancestral. Suddenly, you're on two cards, and he's on seven. It's just that his deck didn't have anything left in it. Like he has no haymakers to drop and punish you there. So he's just doing the best he can, and it wasn't good enough. Yeah, a, a couple things happened. Uh, one is that I had Academy out for a long time, which actually let me kind of leverage my hardcast Force of Wills past and made his Flusterstorm a lot worse too. Like, and then the other was that mid game Flusterstorm ended up ended up be, you know costing him a bit. I think. The, the, the main reason I can think for him to Snapcast or Flusterstorm there was so to play around Mental Misstep. In case I Mental Misstep to Pyroblast, that was his other good option. But it turned out since I could just pay for the Flusterstorm, I would lose that counter fight if he had another counter, which he did. But yep. I was happy just getting extra cards out of the deal. It's the same reason I just tapped out for a Jace and got it Sprite right. Pierce. Like, I, can't right, really, right, right. I can't really do anything but, but get that. All right, so, that all makes sense. Well, it looks like we're, we're having issues with your webcam. It doesn't look like your webcam has made it into the stream based on what I'm seeing. Yeah. I, I see you. Oh, now we get the... Okay, I love the bug-eyed profile picture. <laughs> yeah, we could just use that instead, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I reconnected it, but we'll, we'll see if... Uh, we'll see if that... I mean, that works, too. <laughs> all right, I do want to talk to Steve, though. So I definitely appreciate you uh, yeah, no stepping problem. in uh, while we waited for Steve. Let's, let's actually cycle you out and bring Steve in for this match. So, sounds good. I'd love to hear his take on it, too. Yeah, awesome. So we will be right back momentarily with Steve Menendian to hear his take on that awesome match. <laughs> 